Hey guys and welcome to this video. So I'm going to be talking you through the process of breaking and starting to ride and jump my horse Dally. So Dally is actually a homebred horse of ours. Um, his sire is Van Gogh and he is out of our mare Fiona. So basically this is at the end of last year. So last year he's three, this year he's four. Um, and this is his very, very first time lunging. And it's made a little bit more difficult by the fact that I'm trying to film. But um, basically, before this, I do some groundwork on pressure and release and moving away from the whip and moving away from pressure. And then I kind of try and bring it out onto a larger circle. Um, I also kind of put them over some poles because I find when they have something to think about, they're a little bit less fussy. Um, they don't get distracted as easily. There's something to think about and focus on. So I find it really helpful. Um, as you can see, I have my lunge rope attached to um, a rope halter underneath the bridle. This is because when they're really young, I don't like to attach it to the bit because I don't want them to get any negative experiences through the bit. Like say if he took off, um, like I would have to pull him up just for like safety, but I wouldn't like to give it a big pull on his mouth. I'd rather be able to use the, the rope halter. So that's why I do that. Um, I just took to walk this day just to get him thinking about how to go around me in a circle um, because he did often like to just come in. So this is his first day with the saddle. He does absolutely nothing. Um, when I introduced them to the saddle, I just put, put it on them in the stable and I let them walk around, chill out in the stable for about half an hour. Um, I do put like an old saddle on them in case they wreck it. But um, this is just because I find that they're often good when you put the saddle on, but then say if they move in a strange way and then the saddle feels weird on them, that's when they might get a fright and book. So when you just let them walk around the stable, they're putting their head down, they're moving around, they're turning and they just get used to the feel of it on them. I also trot him over the trot poles again. It just keeps him concentrating, gives him something to think about other than the saddle. Here he decided to stop and maybe go for a roll or something. So I just asked him to keep going. Um, yeah, so it's just the most important thing is that he keeps going forward. Um, and say when he does something like that kind of fussy, I just keep asking him to go forward. And that's a great example of why the trot poles were great um, because they gave him something to lock onto again. So the third day I introduced these strings. So this is just how I was taught to back horses and to give them a mouth. Um, there are, another name for them is Vienna reins, but I use baling twine because it will snap if the horse gets a fright. And some people told me it won't, but I'm, I know from a fact that it will because it has before. So... Um, yeah, it just basically goes from the D ring of the saddle through the bit and underneath the girth to like a ring on the girth. Um, and it just teaches them pressure release and to move into a contact and kind of just the idea of contact. Obviously, this isn't like um, a fix all method. You know, you have to train them when you're riding as well, but it's a good introduction to contact and yeah, just getting them started. So here I'm just asking him to move forward. As you can see, the strings are really, really long. Um, they're just kind of flapping there. They're very loose because if you put them on super tight straight away, you're going to give the horse a big fright. They won't want to go forward. They might even go backwards or rear or something. So it's just really important to me that they're always going forward. Um, I'm also introducing voice commands here. So I say, whoa, and he goes back to walk, which is perfect. And again, going over these trotting poles. So the reason I do the trotting poles so much is because with Cal, my previous homebred, we didn't do so much poles um, at the start. And then when I started to introduce them to him when I was riding, he was a little bit wary of them. It was this big new thing that was a bit scary. Um, so I thought I'd just get them in there from the very start. So poles are just this really normal thing that he deals with every day and they're really not a big deal at all. So that's why I'm doing that. And as you can see, I just do it a few times and then I take them off the poles and then he gets a walk break. You know, it's really short and sweet little um, little parts of trot. So here I'm just introducing him to the water tray. Again, it's just great to just show them loads of different things um, because 
it's not even that he won't spook at a water tray again. It's kind of the process of him getting over the water tray is really important. So he was really scared of it. And then I asked him to do it. Um, and he really didn't want to. He was very, very scared. But when he did, he realized nothing bad happened. It's actually completely fine. So in doing that numerous times, you're going to build this kind of trust that, oh, when she asked me to do things, even if I'm a bit scared, nothing bad actually ever happens. So, you know, obviously what she's asking me to do is usually a safe thing to do. So that's kind of the logic behind it. Um, Because you can't expose a horse to every single different filler ever. So it's more that they just trust that when you ask them to do something, it's a safe thing for them to do. So here we are um, a few days on. Um, and he is lunging again in the strings Um, just to say this is day six of work but he got like days off in between each of these days Um, he wasn't worked every single day in a row so that's just um, a point to note so as you can see the strings are a little bit shorter he has a little bit more contact on his mouth although they're they're kind of flapping around they're still not that short Um, and I'm just asking him to move forward and work over the poles and you can see that he's a lot better he's very even in his stride he's not kind of going forward and back um, and his circle is nice and round so yeah he's really getting the hang of it um, and he loves his little poles so again a couple of days later this is actually oh sorry this is um, the day after I rode him, rode him for the first time, but I didn't get a video of me riding him for the first time because obviously it's, I only had my dad to help me and he can't video and help me at the same time. But I do have clips of the second time riding, which is quite similar. So this is just before I get on him. So when I start riding, I'm still doing the lunging at the same time because I'm only sitting on them for like a few minutes doing a little bit of walk and trot. So it's not really proper work. It's just more me exposing them to the experience of me on them. So I'm still lunging at the same time. Um, so this is me walking him up and down this little um, yard that we have. So this is where I start all the horses. What we do is my dad will give me a leg up and I'll just lie over them. And then he'll walk the horse up and down this lane and they get used to the pressure. Then I'll put one foot in the stirrup and sit up a bit so they can see me, but I can still hop off if anything happens. Um, and then once they get used to the sight of me on there, um, I will get on them properly. So as you can see there, he keeps wanting to stop whenever he gets to my dad. This is because he's used to following a person on the ground. He's not used to having to follow the directions of someone on top of him, which is very, very different. Um, and he has been following my dad as my dad leads him up and down the yard. So it's just him trying to get used to being an independent horse. Um, so yeah, this is my first time going off the lead rein. And here I'm just letting him chill out before I get down and give him a good pat, let him relax. You can see he's licking and chewing there. Um, he's pretty relaxed. He's just thinking and processing everything that's happening. Um, here he tried to walk back to just see me, but I want him to stay still when I get off. So that's why I just stayed by his side. This is the next day of me riding. Um, here he's being a little bit fussy as he goes near my dad again. So I just keep him walking on forward. And I think I have a little trot on the concrete this day. Oh, actually, this, sorry, this is the first day that I go into the arena on him. So I do the same. I lunged him first, then I got up on him on the yard um, and I do a little trot here. And as you can see, he's going to be very kind of um, unwilling to go forward just because he's a little bit like, oh, what's going on? And um, this is a bit of a weird sensation because obviously when I asked him to trot on the lunge, I'm using like pressure behind to his like hindquarters it's hard to teach them what um leg on their side means so it's just kind of um pressure and release I put the pressure on and when he starts trotting I take the pressure back off so he learns that that means to go forward and as you can see each time I do it he's more willing to go forward and he gets more and more confident So here's me going out into the arena for the first time. He has a little spook there, but nothing serious. So basically, I'm just going to walk around the arena and get him nice and settled. And um, just I just want him to go forward, really forward and relaxed.
So before I walked him around the arena, I actually led him around the whole um perimeter of the arena before I got up on him. Just because our arena is very spooky with the trees, there's fields there, there's um like someone's back garden alongside another edge of the arena, there's horses in the other field, you know, it's like a really spooky kind of arena. So I just gave him a little walk around beforehand. Here he kind of spooks at this filler that's along the side, but again, I'm just asking him to move forward and yeah these are just the really little things that you just have to insist that they go past it and then he relaxes and goes all right okay that didn't kill me that's cool so you can see that he really isn't very forward off my leg and this is purely just lack of confidence that he isn't confident to go forward but um he goes into trot you can see there i sit for a bit just because it, it allows me to be a bit more secure in the saddle um, but then as he, as I'm kind of reassured that he's not going to book me off, I go into rising. Here he goes really backwards, doesn't really want to trot forward. So again, I just encourage him to go forward. And yeah, it's very choppy and changey. It's very, you know, like there's no rhythm there or anything. But that is just realities of, you know, starting horses. They're not going to be um, really confident straight away. He's getting used to the chickens and everything. <laughs> Here I just walk him over a little pull. He's a little bit like, what? Even with all the pull work that he's done, he's still a little bit hesitant, hesitant but um, goes over it nicely. So this is now the next day. Um, again, I lunged him and then I got up. Um, I think I didn't really do anything outside the arena. I just got up in the arena. So again, not very, um, not very willing to go forward. He's just little bit dead to the leg and lacking that bit of confidence but once he does get going he's a good bit more forward now that's a better trot and he's not like wobbling as much but you can see now he slows down again I'm having to use a lot of leg um, so I actually pick up a schooling whip after this just to give my leg a bit of backup because I'm kicking, kicking, kicking and, you know, it, I shouldn't be kicking him constantly. That's just going to make him more dead to my leg. So instead of doing that, I'm going to pick up a schooling whip and when he doesn't listen to my leg, I just give him a little tap and it actually really, really worked. Sorry, before I pick up the whip, I actually trotted him over these two poles so you can see um, I'm just always kind of putting him, asking him to go over poles, asking him to, you know, circle, change the rain. Um, so I'm not just always going around the outside of the arena. Um, and it's just practicing my turning and everything there. You can see that turn was a little bit wobbly. Um, and then he's really trying to slow down and not keen to go over this pole, but, um, he gets over it. All right. So now this is where I pick up the schooling whip and you can see the difference. He is much more forward I only had to tap him maybe once or twice and after that he just really got it um as I was saying before when I'm lunging him I'm putting pressure to behind the saddle you know to his hindquarters so I think that's why the schooling whip made more sense to him so I was able to just back up my leg with the schooling whip there I went over a different pole that he hadn't seen and it was like oh my god a pole <laughs> um so he had a little wobble but again went over it, and that's the main thing here I I'm showing you his dodgy steering. Um, so, you know, there's only so much you can do from the ground. The key is just to keep asking, um, try to be as gentle but firm. You can't let them really just get away with running through your hand. So there I asked him to turn. And then when he did turn, I immediately relaxed my reins. He had the pull to think about. So it was really good to have that pull there to give him something to focus on and aim towards. Um, it's just being kind of consistent and not really letting them get away with it. I also teach them to move away from the leg quite early on because I find this really helps with the steering because they're say if a horse is drifting around a corner, the go-to is to put your outside leg on. But you know, a young horse doesn't know what that means. But there you can see that time it was so much smoother once he knows where he's going and he understands what I'm trying to ask him to do. He's so willing. 
So this is a couple of days on. I'm kind of riding and lunging and giving him days off. You know, he's not in like a huge amount of work. He only does about a few laps of trot each time I ride him. So it's definitely not um not too hard on him. So this is just another example of me lunging him, using a different training aid to encourage him to work long and low and to build up those muscles. So this is his very first jump under saddle this day. So this is day 20. This is approximately day 20. I wasn't perfect at working out which day it was, but um, I have the date there anyway. So from now on, I'm just going to give you what date it was instead of what day, because there's big gaps between each video. So that's just me demonstrating how I get on him. If he's, I know I have to teach him to stand still at the block and then he gets a big reward. Here you can see that I'm not using the lunging or the schooling whip anymore. I only use that for maybe two days and he really caught on very quickly. He's actually a very forward and quite sharp horse now. He responds very well to the leg compared to his older brother, Cal, who is much more lazy, but um, Daddy is very forward going. So this is just an example of his flat work. He is, you know, he works in a nice outline. He's very kind of secure in the contact Sometimes he does kind of drop down there a little bit. So I just put on some leg and encourage him to bring back up his head into a better frame. So he's not going behind the vertical. Uh, behind the vertical means when their nose is tucked in towards their chest. Um, just FYI, because I've used that term a few times and I get a few questions about it. So you can, here you can see that my steering is great. Um, he's working around, he bends around my leg. He's very supple to both sides. Um, and he's just generally quite easy to ride. He's really gotten the gotten the gears and has all the buttons now to be ridden very easily. So this is about the time that I think it's um, right to start jumping. So it really depends on the horse, how soon I start jumping. Sometimes I back them and I leave them off for a few months. And then when I, when I bring them back into work, then I jump them. But with Dali, he, I backed him a little bit later, so I decided he was kind of mature enough and everything to start jumping, some little, very little jumps. Um, so before this, to prepare him, I'd done a lot of pull work. I'd done a lot of trotting and cantering over pulls. Here you can see he has a little spook of the pull because I have these V pulls leading him into it, but that was just a little minor hiccup. He's quite careful about the pulls. He always looks at them if you know anything changes but I don't mind that I like him to be sure that he might be careful in the future so there he trotted very nicely over them so I gave him a little pat and um came on the opposite rein just to keep it even always show things from both reins you can see there he's really taking me to the poles he's very confident and forward going so here it's just a little jump and I just trot him up to it and yeah, he just trots over it. <laughs> uh, he had done raised trotting poles before, so I think he thought it was just a raised trotting pole because it was very tiny. So there I use a bit more leg to encourage him to canter away from it. Here again, I just trot in and he gives a nice, um, he lands on the correct lead and canters away nice and balanced. So I canter into it the next time and he gives a bit of a better jump out of the canter because he has a bit more momentum. It can be a little bit tricky for them to trot or jump out of a trot because it's hard to get those legs in the right place. So that was it. I left the his first jumping experience at that, nice and small, just to keep the confidence. So you can see this is a good bit later. He actually went on a break and then came back into work. Um, and this is just me jumping him. It's the only clip I got, but uh, you can see how confident he was. This is only his second time jumping. Um, it just kind of goes to show how good experiences, even over small fences, can really help. And I also kind of left this end bit in to show you how quiet he is. Um, I can just drop the reins and he is a great boy. <laughs> yeah, he's really, really sweet. So again, this is about a week later. Um, I just kind of Ask him to go over the water tree. Hadn't seen it in a while. So he was a little bit like, oh God. Um, but then walks over it nicely. There's actually a, a clip from before this where he spooked a lot more. I just lost it, unfortunately. So I trot him over it and he lands in the canter. So on this day, I actually did a little course for the first time. So it was his first time kind of piecing jumps together and doing distance and stuff. 
So I thought I'd just show some of the flat work first to show you how he's coming on. But his flat work has always been quite good. He's, you know, he's just very simple. He's very light on my hand um, and he's very, as I said, sensitive off the legs. So he really is a pleasure to ride on the flat. And here I'll just show you a bit of the canter. He um, could sometimes go a little bit quick in the canter as he lost his balance, but he's really improved and gotten really strong in the canter. He's actually very easy to shorten for the size of him, which is quite surprising. So here I come around to the crossbow and I'm putting in all the fails. Here's me completely missing the stride and him saving my ass. But I suppose with young horses, you do have to just let them, let them make those mistakes. Um, you can't baby them all the time. So that was it a little bit bigger. And then I'm coming around to this jump on the diagonal, which actually has a filler. And he's never jumped these fillers before. So I go back to trot nice and slow and just ask him to keep going towards it. And he has a little wobble, but I kept it really, really small so that he was able to jump it no matter what. So he was a very good boy and went over it even though it was quite scary. And then I pick back up the canter and go down the line. Again, he hadn't done a line before. So he had a little wobble and it was like, oh God, another jump. Um, but yeah, he was very good. Well, it was just a water tray. I hadn't put the pole above it yet. And then this was my last time jumping it, jumping the course. I jumped it a few more times in between these two clips. So I just had it as a little oxer there coming around to the filler on the diagonal. He was actually really good and changed his lead over the fence here. Kind of just going to show how balanced he is. And again, really working on straightness, going really wide into our corners. You know, it's, it's the really small things that make a big difference to his rideability in the future. There he has a nice jump and comes down the distance to the water tray. And I also jumped the um the jump with the filler a little bit bigger with the filler is actually underneath the jump uh not just to the side just to kind of get him used to fillers and he was very good he just kind of jumped it really well so now this is about two weeks later oh no it's actually much later um like less than a month later so i'm just showing you again our flat work he's very forward He's very supple and round and on the bit. Um, he's always been very simple, in fairness to him. And yeah, he's just a really good boy. Here he is extending down the long side, <laughs> flicking his toes a little bit. I think he might be a little bit flashy when he gets stronger and when he has a summer coat and he's looking a bit less shaggy. Um, but yeah, I really, I love riding him on the flat. He's just really is a joy to ride. So on this day, we actually tackled our first double and triple. So he had never jumped one before. So I thought it was time that he learned what it was. There's our canter transitions. I hadn't really shown one before, but he's, yeah, very good. And then he speeds off down the long side because he got a fright from the chickens. But he comes back quite well. Um, anyway, this is our first time jumping a double and a triple. So I set up a little triple combination along the center line. So I've come off it on both reins. Um, I just did it as poles first and then slowly put each one up. And as you can see, he really found it very easy. He's quite balanced. Well, there, that wasn't a very good example of him being balanced. But, um, you know, it's really easy to turn around the corners. He really listens to your leg when you're turning him. So it's easy to keep him straight. So, yeah, there's him just cantering down um, at first before I put up any jumps. And here it is with the jumps. And as you can see, he's just trying to work out where all those legs are. Um, he has very big, long legs. He's about 17 two hands. So it's a lot of horse to figure out where to go. But um, yeah, he's getting there and he just needs to, you know, get stronger and fitter. Um, this is a different time I'm jumping as well. Here I'm just doing this exercise with a pull before and after the fence to try and encourage him to jump rather than canter over the jumps. Um, because the jumps are quite small compared to him, he does tend to just kind of canter over them. But um, he's slowly learning how to jump, you know, more round and um, with a better technique. 
So here I'm just kind of playing around with a little oxer. Um, there he landed really dead, so I put on some leg and he um, went gung-ho after the jump. So yeah, it's basically just getting his confidence, getting his rideability. Um, as much as I'd love to do a million grids to get him, you know, his technique amazing. He's too young and too inexperienced and weak to do that. You know, it's just going to come with time and working on the flat well and everything like that. So there I also just jumped a little bit of a bigger jump, um, which was kind of pretty average, not going to lie. Um, so this is another few weeks later and you can see he had a nice big careful jump over that which I really encouraged um, and this was his first time doing bounces so yeah he's never done bounces before so he was a little bit excited and he's getting you can see each time we jump he's just that little bit more careful and um, which is good to see um, he kind of struggled a little bit with the bounces. He was trying to canter through them rather than jump. Um, but I actually did it again a few days later and I put up the bounces a bit bigger and he gave a much better jump. He started, you know, bouncing them rather than trying to canter through them. But it was still a really good first attempt for him. And I was really proud of how he was jumping. So yeah, that's kind of the journey with Dali. It's been a little bit, um, it's been quite smooth. But um, I've, you know, I'm excited for the future with him and make sure to subscribe so you can keep watching videos of him and find out how he continues to improve because I really have high hopes for his jumping. He just really needs to work on his technique and he has all the scope in the world and he does try to be careful. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, let me know what you think and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.